We'd like to thank you once again for joining us in a powerful study of God's holy and divine word. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Beloved, we are truly blessed to be with you on this day. There is nothing like going into God's word and allowing it to permeate our hearts and our minds and bring everlasting change to us. You know, <clears throat> as we live in this life, there are many that struggle in this life. And life is not an easy nor a simple thing. But beloved, when you have a hope that there is another place that the Lord has prepared for you, then you begin to look at this life in a different way. And you're not struggling in it, being anxious all the time as though you can make some drastic changes in this world. No matter how you scream, no matter how angry you get toward other people, you can't cause them to change, to change their habits, to change their ways, to change how they view things. But beloved, the only one that you can change is you. And that's the most important change that will ever be made, is when you realize yourself that only you can change because of who you have come to know, and that is of the Lord. Amen? Because the Word tells us that we ought to be molded into the image of God. And if we are molded in the image of God, beloved, then we will be like Christ Jesus, and we will be able to handle this life in a different way than we try to do on our own. Beloved, let us pray. Father God, we thank you, we praise you for this day. We bless your holy and divine name, Father God. We thank you for your word, and we ask, Lord God, that you will touch each and every one that will hear this word, that, Father God, that it might challenge them, that it might bring an everlasting change to them, Father God, not only how they view uh, God, but how they view themselves. And, Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, for the magnificent knowledge of understanding your heart. Father God, we praise you and glorify you in this day in uh, Jesus' name. What I want to talk uh, with you today about is learning how to reason with God. How to reason with God. Beloved, none of us are born in this earth with the ability to reason with God. We know how to reason with God because God has uh, shown us examples of how we might be able to reason with him. And when I say reason with God, beloved, because many people have this idea in their minds, you cannot question God. Or a situation might happen in someone's life and they'll say, man, I don't know why that happened. And then our answer to them is, you don't question God. He knows what's best for you. Well, beloved, not being able to question God put us in a very vicarious and a uh, seemingly unobtrusive situation. Because, beloved, we are to be able to question God. I remember when uh, my first uh, wife died, uh, Jackie. And I had many questions, and I kind of kept them to myself and myself, and I didn't ask other people, you know, or put God on blast and say, why, why, why? No, I didn't do that, but I did take the time to go before the Lord and allow the Lord to give me the answer of why. And beloved, you know the thing that the Lord put upon my spirit was this, 
I'll give you the answer. But that answer is for you and you alone. And beloved, I understood that. And I received that. And I accepted that. Uh, beloved, because it took time in order for me to process it. And you see, and God knows those kinds of things. Because when we go through try, trying times in our lives and we don't know exactly what to do, the Lord tells us in His Word uh, that, that if any man like wisdom, let him ask of man, let him ask of a counselor, let him ask of a preacher or a prophet. No, the Word of God said, let him ask God without wavering, but to bring it forth before the Lord, and he will give the wisdom that is necessary for us to deal with any situation in our lives. So, beloved, we can uh, question God. We can reason with God. The Word of God tells us, uh, and I want you to, and I'm not going to stay there in this scripture, but I want to uh, preface our teaching, uh, and it is in Isaiah, the first chapter. You just write it down somewhere and go back, lay it and read it. The 18th verse, the first chapter, it says, Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And that's in Isaiah. And beloved, the Lord is saying, even right here, yes, you can come and reason together with me. But one thing is for sure, you've got to be willing to do what I ask you to do. There are those who want to reason with the Lord or want to question the Lord, but at the same time, not willing to do his will, but to do their will. Beloved, in every situation that you have in your life and everything you might go through in your life, it is God working together the things that are happening in your life. He's working it for ultimately your good. And sometimes you have to go through rough waters in order to get where your destination is. Beloved, that does not mean that the Lord has forsaken you. That doesn't mean that he has rejected you. But it simply means, beloved, you are going through a rough patch in your life right now. But the Lord is leading you somewhere. And in the midst of that, it's okay to reason uh, with the Lord or to say to the Lord, uh, Lord, what is this situation for? What is the purpose for it in my life? And beloved... He will give an answer. But we don't put them on blast. You know, like I see some people do. And uh, while others are around, they'll say, Man, I don't know why God doing this. Man, I can't understand why He allowed me to go through this here. And here's my neighbor who's ungodly, who don't know the Lord, don't care nothing about Him, and yet He's putting me through all this. I don't understand that. That's basically what you're saying. Uh, beloved, that the Lord is evil, that the Lord is wicked, because you're saying that he is doing things to you that he's not doing to the one who is wicked, the one who doesn't know him, and you are his child. So, beloved, you are accusing of the Lord. Like I said, it's okay to question God, but it's never okay to call God into question. Amen? Amen? It's okay to question God, but it's never okay to call God into question. Because God knows exactly what he is doing in your life. I remember being at uh, this funeral, and uh, as I was um, uh, viewing the body, 
the Lord put upon my spirit to uh, share with uh, the, the young man had died, he had died suddenly, and his wife. And the Lord put upon my spirit to share something with his wife. And I could see how this grown she was. I could see that she was uh, confused at what had taken place because, I mean, the young man was in his 30s and she was in her 30s. So uh, why did this happen? You know, and it's as though everyone was saying to her, you know, well, you don't question the Lord. You don't question the Lord. Well, I went up to her and I shared with her and I said, let me tell you something. I was in a similar situation uh, like this, losing a spouse. But, you know, after much of debate within my heart and my spirit, the Lord allowed me to question him of why this had taken place. Now, he did say to me that it was for me and no one else. And, um, and I shared that with her. And it just seemed the countenance of her face change. You know, is it, it, that she felt an enlightening, that she felt a freedom, that she was okay now to ask God and to question Him to why this was the way it was. Many people make up all kind of reasoning, you know, especially worldly people. You know, where God needed another rose in his garden in heaven. God needed another singer in his choir in heaven. God needed another friend that he needed to talk to. So that's why he took her or him and brought him up into heaven. You know, there's so many reasons that we give, that we make up. And beloved, they are unreasonable. And many times make absolutely no sense at all. But that's what the world should do. Because they have truly no hope. So they have to create hope on this side. But when you have hope, oh beloved, it is totally uh, different. Yes, we can question the Lord. But at the same time, beloved, we do it in a fashion. And that's why I want to get to where Moses, where Moses uh, questioned God. But as I said before in studies before, that Moses questioned God, but he questioned God alone. He didn't put God on blast. And beloved, that's why I say you really truly need to follow us. And you can follow us either on Facebook at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown with these studies, or you can follow us on our YouTube channel television station and that is uh, on YouTube at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown. You can follow us, follow us there and you will see how all this is culminating uh, together in what the Lord is doing. And you know what beloved? Not only what the Lord is doing in Moses' life at that particular time, but also we can see our lives coinciding with Moses' life and to see how God responds to certain things and certain actions, beloved. And when we can do see that, we can apply that to our own personal life. And it causes us to be at a place where we are no longer anxious when things happen in our lives but rather beloved we can reason together with the Lord amen but I want you to turn with me to Exodus uh, the sixth chapter and we are actually on the tenth of verse and the word of God says this, this is the Lord speaking to Moses. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Go in and speak unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, that he let the, the children of Israel go out of this land. Now, remember, Moses had already spoken to the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, if you look in the ninth verse, the word of God says that they were anguish in their spirit, because of the cruel bondage, and they did not hearken unto the voice of Moses, because they was upset, because he had gone before Pharaoh, him and Aaron, and 
and, and, and did uh, things what God told them to do right in front of the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh in turn began to press the people to work harder, to press the people uh, that they were uh, uh, recognizing the great bondage that they were in. They had become satisfied living in Egypt, beloved. If they had never gotten out of uh, the land of Goshen and out of the nation of Egypt, they would have lived there and been satisfied because they had become comfortable in that situation. They had, they had been in a place for so long that they no longer considered themselves to be slaves or servants, but rather they were there for the Egyptians to use them, and that was it. And they didn't look at it in a negative way any longer. But when Moses went before Pharaoh and threatened Pharaoh, then Pharaoh began to put the bondage upon the people, and the people became angry at Moses and said, and basically Moses, you are the one who is causing Pharaoh now to treat us this ungodly way. And Moses had gone to the people and said to them, you know, prepare the Lord desire to uh, deliver you. And they would not hear him. So this is where Moses is right now when God says to him to go to Pharaoh. And God had said, said it in himself. I would um, harden Pharaoh's heart and so that he would not obey you. So Moses knew that he was going into a situation that ultimately was going to fail in the way that he saw that the people should be delivered. I guess he felt it should be much easier than that. You know, Lord, why do you harden uh, Pharaoh's heart? Why don't you soften his heart, say that he will let the people go? But the Lord has a purpose. And that's why I say, beloved, we must come and reason together. And that's what Moses was doing when God spoke to him. Uh, and to go to Pharaoh, look what Moses said. Now Moses is reasoning with God. He's not putting God at the blast. He is not questioning God in his ability and his desire to set the people free. He's just stating the facts of what he sees in his humanness and outside of the supernatural abilities of God. Look what Moses said. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. He's saying, fact, they did not hearken unto him. How then shall Pharaoh hear me who am of uncircumcised lips? Who is Pharaoh? And how is he going to hear me? This uncircumcised leader who people look unto as God, how is he going to now listen to little old me or Aaron? If your children who you said you want to deliver will not hear me, how will Pharaoh now hear me? And you said you was going to harden his heart. <laughs> how now? Is it going to be more difficult for me to do this task? Beloved, he was reasoning with God. And the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron and said, And give them a charge unto the children of Israel, and unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. You see, beloved, no matter what Moses said, no matter how Moses wanted to reason with the Lord, his desire still was to do the will of the Lord. Not to call God in question, but simply to state before him the facts that he was facing. Not that God did not know that, 
But when you when you under, when you read the word, and the Lord said, and Moses spoke, saying, "Behold, the children of Israel will not listen to me." How do you expect Pharaoh, the greatest ruler in the world at that particular time, the greatest kingdom in the world at that particular time, how do you expect him to listen to me? a Hebrew, a Jew. How do you expect him to listen to me? Let me know. You see, he was asking the Lord for, for what? Give me directions. Give me some kind of hope. Make me feel good about myself. And maybe then I'll be able to handle this situation that you put before me. But beloved, for you and I, who have the Spirit now living on the inside of us, because we are children of God. Beloved, all that Moses was complaining about, belly aching about, reasoning about, should not be our reason. Because we have what Moses did not have. Even Jesus said, the apostles said, that those great men of old desired to see the day that you and I and they were living in. Meaning Jesus and the disciples. To see this day. A day where the Spirit of God will not only speak to you out of a bush or lead you with a cloud in the desert place, but one who would now reside in his children. No longer residing in a temple that is made with hands, that had to be carried about throughout the desert land, but rather he lives on the inside of us. He tabernacles inside of us us. So beloved, we have every ability that God qualifies us for as being his children. And that is many of things. In my name you shall cast out demons. In my name you shall drink any deadly poison and it will not harm you. In my name you will pick up serpents and they will not harm you. In my name, you will speak words of power and authority. But in my name, beloved, so you and I truly cannot speak the same words when Moses spoke, but we still can reason with the Lord when certain situations come in our lives. Just like the woman who had, uh, who husband had died suddenly. And she had children to raise. Yes, she could go before the Lord and allow the Lord to speak to her. You know, beloved, that's just like you know, you probably watch some of these shows on television where they talk about these cold cases. And a case may go on uh, on these detective shows. And a case may go on for years, maybe 10, 15 years. But you know, when it is finally solved and maybe someone is arrested for it or uh, a, a, a body or uh, uh, bones may be found 20 years later, those people have a sense of closure. All the relatives and the friends and maybe the parents and whomever, there is a sense of closure. And God the Father don't mind giving you that. Even the world knows that. That that kind of situation brings closure to an individual or to a family. So beloved, uh, just know this, that you can reason or with God. You can question God. Just don't just don't call him into question. 
or to question his character or to question uh, uh, why he got to do it that way. You got to do it that way because the Lord said you got to do it that way. That's the same question that Jesus asked. Lord. Is there another way? I assumed that he was talking about the cross. Is there another way that we can redeem the world? And then Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. So he had to go to the cross in order to redeem of the world. And he did that, beloved. And just as Moses did, and, Jesus, and God gave him a charge. Look what the word of God says. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, uh, to bring out Israel out of the land of Egypt. So he just gave him a charge and said, you go and you know that I'm going with you. So go. Glory be to the living God. So beloved, go. Go do what the Lord has called you to do. Walk in it. Believe God. Forget all the naysayers and even forget the doubt that you might have in your heart and your mind and just go forward because the Lord our God will be with you. Amen. Praise be to the living God. Dearly beloved, we pray that you have been blessed uh, through the teaching of God's word. And I pray that you will uh, take time to write us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box, 186 Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Or you can text us at 337-278-8201. With your prayer request or whatever the Lord may put upon your heart and your spirit. And beloved, remember, uh, check us out on uh, Facebook and on the YouTube at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, where we are sharing the Word of God on a daily basis. And it is God, beloved. I can't do this within myself. I don't have the ability. I don't have the strength. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the understanding. Beloved, without the Lord, I have nothing. I need Him, and I pray that you will continue to pray for myself and my family, that the Lord will continue to strengthen us and guide us. And beloved, we will continue to pray for you and to believe that the Lord is doing great and mighty works in your life. Because we know that our God does great things when he does them. Amen. Beloved, be blessed until the Lord bring us together again.